This podcast replay is brought to you by Choice Mortgage Bank. Call Michael Kotze right now, 561-441-2730. State rates under 3.5%, 561-441-2730 for Choice Mortgage Bank. All right, we are uh, getting ready to get Jay on. Uh, Bills are getting ready to visit the Texans on Saturday at 435. We have Jay for you, sir. Excellent. You can follow him on Twitter at Jay Skursky. You can catch his work there at the Buffalo News. Jay, good afternoon, my friend. How are you doing? Doing very well. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. It's always good to have you on, Jay. Jay, how long you've been covering the Bills already at this point? Oh, geez. Uh, at least 10 years, uh, probably a little, a little bit more, uh, when you go back to, to my first, uh, stop of my career. But yeah, with the, with the Buffalo News, 10 years now. Okay. So let's talk a little Chan Gailey. Uh, Chan was, uh, just hired here in Miami. Uh, and I think yeah. he's going to be kind of a mentor, too, to kind of guide the offense and quarterbacks. I don't know if he's really going to be like the full-time offensive coordinator. I think Shaplinski might be a guy that also a- handles some of those duties. And I think he's going to be a little bit more of a mentor. But walk us through your experiences of Chan Gailey and how he did there on offense. Yeah, you know, he. Uh, I think he took a, a rather unheralded group of players uh, offensively uh, with the Bills and, and turned it into a pretty darn good offense at times. And uh, obviously, you know, he's a, a fan of the spread offense. He likes to run uh, a lot of wide receivers. You'll see even some five wide receiver sets, things like that. But he uh, he had a knack for, for taking guys who maybe weren't the most talented players uh, on the field and, and turning it into a cohesive offense. And, and obviously... He's got a very long uh, history and relationship with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, you know, we'll see uh, how long Ryan Fitzpatrick continues on as the as the Dolphins quarterback. But uh, Chan knows him well, and, and given the way that Fitzpatrick ended the season there, uh, you know, you certainly have to wonder if uh, you know if that was in uh, it, you know part of the move here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Chan Gailey is a number one. Getting a chance to be around him uh, in Buffalo here, I, I can say that you know when he was let go, uh, there was a lot of disappointment uh, among the fan base. The, the timing uh, was probably right. You know they they were not able to get over the hump with Chan Gailey, but uh, in, in terms of you know just who he was as a person, I, he had a lot of people in Buffalo rooting for him to succeed. And I think you'll you'll find that to be the case down there in Miami as well. Yeah, Jay, I, I had him down here for a year. It was a long time ago in the early 2000s. Uh, Dave wants that time, and I was the beat guy then. And uh, and I came away uh, with a lot of respect for him. And I think everybody that's kind of worked with him ends up feeling the same way about Chan Gailey. And here's the other thing that's kind of um, – Uh, It's funny. We can trip out on it. You and I can laugh about it because this is what some fans tell me. And it's weird because you just gave, uh, you know, the reason why it's actually a good hire. But fans are coming up to me and saying, well, wait a minute, dude, this guy's really old. The NFL has changed and all of that. And you just talked about it. This is a guy that loves to spread. He was actually doing stuff maybe more ahead of where the NFL is now. So actually, Chan fits more of what they're doing now in the NFL on a on a general basis than ever. Yeah, no question. I mean, he uh, yeah, he, in a lot of ways, he was probably uh, you know ahead of his time with some of that stuff. So yeah, don't think that you know because you're getting uh, Chan Gailey that you're going to you know given his age that it's going to be run run punt. Uh, or run, run, pass, punt. I guess I should say it, it's going to be completely the opposite of that. I mean, he'll throw the ball on first down. He'll throw the ball on second down. Uh, he is not going to be afraid at all to put the ball in the air. So I don't think people should should worry about that. You know, the uh, you know this uh, this higher setting the Dolphins' offense back. Uh, you know, twenty or thirty years in terms of uh, the style of football that they're going to play. I'm with you there. Jay Skursky, by the way, you can follow him on Twitter at Jay Skursky. You can catch his work there at, at the Buffalo News. Uh, Jay, when, when you talk about Chan and and his style, is it a, a aggressive? Is it conservative? Is it somewhere in the middle? How would you describe it to, to doll fans? Yeah, I'd say it's somewhere in the middle. I mean, you know, he, he's, you know, I, I'm, I always fall more on the aggressive uh, side of the coin. Uh, I, I prefer to see 
NFL coaches be a little bit more aggressive, but we just know for whatever reason that's not exactly their style, right? And uh, you know they, they they're conservative by nature, but I, I would not cons- I would not consider Chan Gailey to be conservative by any stretch. I, I do think, as I said before, that he is going to be aggressive, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, to throwing the football. And you know, to me, it'll be pretty interesting. You know, obviously, I think you know most people are expecting Miami to be you know heavily invested in this in, in the quarterback class coming up, and you know what that could mean for them, but. Uh, you know, I'm particularly interested to see if uh, they kind of get the band back together, you know, if you will, with uh, with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Chan. What what is Fitzpatrick? Is he on a one year deal, or is, no, does no, he have another year? He's on got his another. He's, there? Yeah, he's got another year, doggy. He's got one more. So I think that's kind of. I think he's part of the bridge for the next yeah. quarterbacks. I think that's what it is. That's I, I think both he and Gailey are here to kind of mentor. Uh, one's here to mentor co- coaches. The other one's here to mentor the players. I think that's kind of what Yeah, well, you know, in terms of guys, I mean, you guys, I'm sure you guys have gotten to know Fitzpatrick a little bit. Uh, obviously, we know Fitz here in Buffalo. And, you know, everybody loved him up here. So uh, I, I don't think you could do a heck of a lot better in terms of it, it just – quality of human beings in those positions and I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to be ideal for that job kind of mentoring a, a young guy particularly if it is a you know a high first round draft pick uh, I, I could easily see why the Dolphins would be interested in doing something like that and it, it will be a lot of fun I don't know you know how many wins it's going to lead to Miami to you know at least next year with uh, you know anytime you have a rookie quarterback uh, or a veteran and you know for that matter kind of guiding him along you know, you're probably not going to be expected to be uh, really, really competitive, uh, you know, for another year or two. But, it, you know, it, it will be pretty interesting, at, at least from a Buffalo perspective, to watch it from afar, to see all these years later, Chan Daly and Ryan Fitzpatrick reunited. So let me ask you something. Jay Skursky from the Buffalo News, he covered uh, Chan Gailey when he was there in Buffalo for a couple of years. What quarterbacks exactly did he work with there in Buffalo? And then part two of that question or follow-up to that is how uh, your experiences with him with either veteran or young quarterbacks because he may have a mix of that here while he's here because he may be working with Fitz, who he knows very well, but then he also may be working with some young guys that he, they may be trying to mold. So talk to us about that. What quarterbacks did he work with in Buffalo, and how do you think he'll work with young and old? Yeah, you're putting me on the spot here. I'm trying to jack my memory now. So let's see, we've had three years of McDermott, two of Rex, two of Marone, and then it would have been three of, of Chan. So we're going back, uh, you know, seven years now here, eight years, I guess. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the most success that he had was uh, was Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, I'm trying to think when Chan was first hired, uh, the, the Bills had a young guy uh, by the name of Trent Edwards who, who started for them. And, and I'm sure that they overlapped at some point. Uh, but, but it was pretty clear early on in Gailey's tenure that Ryan Fitzpatrick was, was going to be his guy. And, you know, in terms of, you know, the veteran versus the young player, uh, you know, Fitzpatrick kind of came in and it, he made it, he did what Ryan Fitzpatrick does, which we've seen, you know, what we've seen him do in New York. We saw him do it in Buffalo. We certainly saw him do it, do it down there in Miami this year. You know, he can play really good football for a season at a time or a half a season at a time. He can kind of convince you that, yeah, Hey, you know, we can win, you know, we can win games with this guy. And that's what happened with, uh, with Shane Gailey and Ryan Fitzpatrick together. And, and again, there was not a lot of talent on those offenses. I mean, Fitzpatrick was a seventh round pick. Their best receiver at that time, Stevie Johnson was a seventh round pick. They had undrafted receivers. They had an undrafted running back in, in Fred Jackson. So, they were uh, a, a very kind of unheralded group that Gailey was able to mesh into a, a cohesive, pretty darn good offense at times. And But the key, I think, was the relationship that he had with Ryan Fitzpatrick to be able you know, to run that scheme, the, the spread system, as, as we talked about. He put a lot of faith and a lot of trust in Ryan Fitzpatrick to do that. And I don't know that he would you know, want to – you know, obviously the, there will be pressure – to play a young guy, particularly if he's taken in the top five of the draft. But I think you got a good situation there with Ryan Fitzpatrick, who, as I said before, can can really mentor a young player, help him through learning Gailey's offense, and then 
you know, when the time is right, you know, you turn it over to the young guy. I think that's a, a pretty good setup for the Dolphins. Well, Jay, you'll be uh, covering a, a playoff game this weekend. Uh, what do you think about the Bills' chances uh, against the Texans? I think they got a good chance. I, I actually think this is a pretty good matchup for the Bills. Uh, you know, I, obviously the Houston Texans have you know some weapons uh, on the offensive side of the football. They they ran the ball pretty well this year with Carlos Hyde. I think the, the the lone weakness that the Bills might have defensively is against the run. That would be my only concern. But this team is very very good against the pass, and they've got a number one cornerback in Tre'Davious White, who I think the NFL is is starting to sort of take notice of and. I think they, they're going to feel pretty good about putting Tredavious White on DeAndre Hopkins. And, and obviously Hopkins is you know one of the best receivers in the game, but Tredavious White is going to be eager to go out and show that he's one of the best cornerbacks in this game. So I think offensively uh, for the Bills, uh, the Texans are not a, a very good defense. They're, you know, they're 28th in the league in yards allowed. They're 31st in, in third down defense. They're dead last in red zone defense. So this Bills offense has, has really – I think struggled uh, at times. It, you know, it's still growing uh, in its second year with with Josh Allen at quarterback, but it's getting there. And they ended the season playing against six straight top ten defenses. Well, now they go into the playoffs and they get the twenty eighth ranked defense. So I think that I think we're going to see this Bills offense uh, sort of break out here a little bit against this uh, this Texans team. And, and if the Bills defense can do what it's done pretty much all season, I, I really do like the Bills' chances uh, of pulling. What I would consider to, consider to be a mild upset. I mean, you look at the point spread right now; it's three, three and a half. So, you know, people are expecting a pretty close game. I think I see that too, but I, but I feel very good about the Bills' chances of, of going and, and getting a road playoff win this week. Jay, one more thing before I let you go: uh, Are how, where are you with Josh Allen? Because he looks like a cool kid. Obviously, plays his ass off. I, I still don't believe that that he knows where that arm is going at times, and the accuracy is something that I know he's improved in certain areas, but there are moments that it will leave you scratching your head, and I just don't believe you'll be able to always count on that arm, especially in key moments. Tell me where I'm wrong. Well, I, I mean, you know, the accuracy did improve this year, and, you know, you look at the completion percentage, I think it jumped up six points, which was a pretty good jump. It's still not where it needs to be. I think it needs to jump up, you know, probably another six points next year, too. Uh, I will say the short and intermediate passing game, he was much more accurate this year. There was a, a noticeable improvement in that. Did he miss some of those throws? Sure, but, you know, every quarterback is going to do that. So the area for Josh Allen that has to get him be- has to get better and it has to get a lot better next season is with the deep ball accuracy. He uh, missed way, way too many opportunities that were there for him down the field this year, and that really stunted the growth of this uh, of this offense. And, uh, you know, it took away, uh, it took a lot of points off the board, quite frankly, when, when Josh Allen missed on, on open deep ball. So that's something that he's going to have to improve on, um, you know, this, this offseason. But, you know, you look overall, he had 29 touchdowns combined uh, between passing and in rushing. I said 30 before the year would have been a pretty good number, and he, he basically sat out the, the season finale because it was meaningless. So I think he would have got to that number. He showed a lot of growth here in, in the second year, and he is far from a finished product. He'd be the first to tell you that. But I think when you consider what, you know, the steps they were able to take, uh, as a team, and, and particularly as an offense, you have to remember, guys, they, they had nine new starters on offense this year. That is a, a great deal of turnover. So they're not there yet offensively, but I think Josh Allen showed enough uh, to, to be reasonably optimistic that in 2020, if he can take the steps that he took from year one to year two, if he can carry that over into year three, they may have something there. Yeah, and they never and they didn't play Nathan Peterman this year. So uh, as long as Peterman's not there, there has to be some hope. But that 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 one really left me floored, Jay. I don't know what they saw in that guy, dude. That was ugh. yeah, that was. It feels like a lifetime ago that Nathan Peterman was was out there for this team. It was uh, you know just last season though, and, and funny enough, uh, you know the injury to Josh Allen uh, happened in the game at Houston where they'll be going here uh, this weekend for for the playoff game. And that was the last time that we saw Nathan Peterman. And, uh, you know, I'm sure from a Bill Spann perspective, they would, they would say uh, mercifully that was the last time that they saw him. But, yeah, this is uh, this is Josh Allen's show up here in Buffalo right now. And uh, there, there's no question that, you know, this franchise is, is committed to him being their franchise quarterback. And, and we'll see. 
uh, if he can take that step, and you know, he could take a huge step in that right direction uh, this weekend if he can get a playoff win. Yeah, and beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and right now, John Gruden is in love with Nathan Peterman. So, it is what it is. What are you going to do, my man? Follow him on Twitter at Jay Skursky. Catch his work there at the Buffalo News. Hey, Jay, uh, Dolphins really appreciate it. Great insight on Chan Gailey and a little Ryan Fitzpatrick, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. Happy New Year. Thanks. Thank you, my brother. Happy New Year. There you go. Jay Skursky from the Buffalo News. I thought that was cool, man. That's good insight for you Dolphin fans. A little bit on Chan Gailey. We'll work on, uh, on more of that for you here on the program.